Hi, my name is Leo Forte and this is Tristan Phoenix. We are about to demonstrate how to do a hog tie. Now a hog tie is a something more of an advanced technique as far as bondage is concerned. There's a lot of variables that you have to keep in mind when you're doing a hog tie. In particular, one is the submissive's breathing because when you're doing a hog tie, in essence, you're just constricting the body into the smallest possible shape it can go for whatever style of rope uh, bondage you're using. Uh, that being said, sometimes the breathing can become very labored because the chest might be too extended or there might be pressure going on on that. But uh, always keep that in mind and always have with you a pair of safety shears or a knife that you can quickly cut through any rope in case anything goes wrong. Okay, so we're going to start everything off finding the bite of a rope and put your different forms. We're going to start off with a double column tie because it's not really bondage if they can get to, to the ropes. <laughs> two columns three times to give ample displacement of tension and weight on the skin so that not too much is going on in one particular uh, one particular area that tends to cause a little bit of rope burn so uh, make sure that you are always looking out for your submissive uh, make sure to check in with them you look for certain signs on the skin that are going to tell you how things are going uh, specifically look for color change in the extremities, and in someone with a darker skin like myself, uh, you will always want to check the capillary refill, which is when you push down on the, on the fingernails, and the amount of time that it takes back for the fingernail to turn red again should indicate whether or not they've got really good blood flow. Now, One particular move here that a lot of people forget to do is to be able to cut off the, the actual column tie. Because I could leave it like this, but it's just two hands inside of a sleeve. So what I do is I take my two ropes, I cross them, and open your hands. I create a cinch between the two, between the two arms so that the hands don't slip out as easily. Now the only real knots that we're going to be using are going to be square ties. As in the particular style of bondage that I use, shibari, there is no real knots. It's all tension and I'm about to show you that. So make a regular box knot right there, just so it doesn't go anywhere. Okay, and then what that ends up doing is that leaves you a little loop, which can be used later on as a hitch or you can just leave it there for whatever you want. Now what I'm going to be doing is, I'm going to be bringing his hands up to his chest. Or oh, actually connecting his hands to his chest by making a very simple rope harness. And like I said, everything is based on tension. So, I'm creating a new bite right here, which holds the tension of the chest. There's uh, plenty of variations that you can take on making chest harnesses. They are pretty much limitless. It is all on the creativity of the rigger. Some of them can be very artistic and beautiful, while some of them can be very simple and functional. Now, you'll see here that it's not necessarily going to be the prettiest uh, rope work in the beginning or even in the middle of it, but you will be given plenty of opportunities as you go along to clean up your work so it doesn't look a hot mess. So now what I'm about to do, as you can see it's still all tension, not a single knot. What I'm going to do is I'm going to constrict the movement of his arms. Now when you're doing this, be very careful where you place the rope. Look forward. Mess up my body. You have to be very careful where you place the rope. 
you've got particular arteries that are running through your arms um, that you have to be careful not to cinch off. So make sure not to put anything around any joints like the elbow or the wrist. As the wrist itself, as you can see, is being cupped by all of these. It's not one particular line going across. But anyways, we're about to immobilize the arm. A lot of times if you're working with someone who has a very nice build, they'll already have these preset grooves around the bicep and the tricep areas. Now, as I said, it's not necessarily going to be the prettiest thing in the midway point. As you can see, it's kind of all over the place. But this is where you use your abilities as a rigger to improvise and bring it all together. Like I said, you're given plenty of opportunities to make your bondage look pretty. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to collect all the ropes like so. And again, all tension. And right here what I'm doing is called wrapping, where you take your ends and you wrap them. It's a little bit time consuming, but it makes everything look that much better when you're done. Right here, I'm going to take the opportunity to split my ropes and be able to create more tension points along the actual bondage piece so that it's sturdier and less a lot longer. So there we go, putting more tension. And if you do it just right, there will be so much tension at the end of your line that all you have to really do is slip the end through the line. Going. Good. All right, your hands. They're okay. As you can see, it's now starting to come together. Make sure that the symmetry is right on, unless you're trying to do asymmetrical bondage, which is a totally different tutorial. But as you can see, everything has got a line of symmetry. It's going to be the same on the left and right. That also helps out a lot if you're doing any kind of suspension because that ensures that there's an equal distribution of the weight amongst the ropes. Get up a second turn around. As you can see, the chest harness itself is very simple. It's just one line going across the chest and two going across the shoulders. Thank you. Just to put everything together. All right, make small adjustments if you have to. All right, sideways. Now, the big thing about a hog tie is to completely immobilize the person. So now that we've immobilized the upper body, the chest, the arms, and the hands, we gotta do the legs. There's many variations on which you could do this. Uh, some of them will be a single foot, something like this. Some of them will just be binding the feet to each other, or you can bind the feet to the actual chest harness, or any other apparatus for, for that matter. Um, I could take his feet right now and bind them up to the top of this uh, metal piece. But this is gonna be much simpler. I'm gonna feed the rope to the butt right here, and we're just gonna create a simple column tie. Now this particular column tie and is not necessarily the most popular, um, not for any particular reason, but because there are so many different styles and many people today are being taught by similar, similar teachers and similar bondage books that have the same tie, so that's why everything looks the same. So what I'm doing right here is, again, I'm making three stacks of my rope so that I've got enough uh, space 
to be able to pull against the limb. Uh, this makes sure that not one particular area in the skin is being pulled on too much at once. It's being distributed by the three lines. So, what I do here is I feed the tips of my rope through the original bite and I make the cinch in the center. Now, I'm going to do that again, but this time instead of letting it go all the way through, I'm going to create a lark's head right here. So, I'm going to feed the ropes in through the lark's head and adjust it so that it's nice and taut. And that's going to keep it from moving. As far as connecting the bottom half of the body to the top of the half of the body, there's many ways that you can go about it. You can put it through any one of the other pieces of the chest harness. You can put it through the wrists, wherever you so like. A lot of this is just limited by the creativity of the rigger. In this particular case, that little bite that we left right here, that little loop, and the column ties, this one I'm going to use to bring everything together. So, I'm going to feed the ends through it. And I'm going to use it as a pulley system. To bring the top and lower body together. I'm going to feed it between the legs. But as you do this, be careful that you don't add unnecessary um, strands of rope where there's already a cinch because that'll just get tighter and tighter and that's when you end up hurting the extremities because you are cutting off that much more blood flow without even knowing it. So always be careful, always keep your eyes open, communicate with your sub, check out any physical, um, any physical signs that there might be something going wrong, uh, check in with the hands, capillary refill rate, look at the skin, see that? It's taking a little bit uh, more time to come back to its original color. So that just keep in mind that that means you've got a limited amount of time going up. So you get it to the particular length you want it to be. You okay? Mm -hmm. All right. Now, using the technique of wrapping, I'm going to get rid of all this excess rope. And again, like I said, it's what makes it look neater, uh, better put together. It is a little time consuming, but if you take that much pride in your work, you're going to make it look the best as you can, even if it does take a little bit of time. Okay, I'm getting down towards the end of my rope. And what I have to think about is when to stop wrapping and split my lines. Split the lines just means open up the two sides. So I'm going to do it right about here. I'm going to feed the line in the middle to create tension right there. And I'm going to split the lines to make another square knot to close it all off. And as I said, you don't necessarily use knots in bondage, at least in this particular style, uh, unless it's to close it off. And in this entire thing, we use two knots. We use one square knot for the wrists and one square knot here at the ends. Now, if you have something longer like this, you can just tuck it away. Remember, there's enough tension in here that you can just slip the rope through, and it's not really going to go anywhere. How you doing? I'm okay. Okay, he's doing fantastic. And this is a hog tie.